This is one of the poems of mine in the anthology called The Aspen Path. The aspen leaves have fledged and so are distant, having traveled into their exterior summer lives, preoccupied now with living, not dreaming, a loss of intimate relation. Breezes, though, move toward me with softer hands. Why can't I approach my own growth with such undivided intentions? Without new teachers, I revisit the rituals, a star I make room for in a small asymmetrical window, pussy willow soaking its roots in a stoneware cup. The phases come, the trunks are timeless, as if moon were shining on them through the day. All light enters us without permission. The logic is unanswerable. Aging is a crime. I stand under trees as if under their influence. Water everywhere to read this season. See, it has swallowed the highest stone. The rainbow lipped branches in the gradual thaumaturgy of spring rain. We each have an instrument. It wakes the younger ones first, the rest reluctant to start again with tarnished horns. Aging my solstice, I didn't notice the turn. Was the dawn different when I was seven years old than it will be when I am 70? As if we were twins and one of us is gone. 60 hours before the asteroid hit, they say, it appeared like a star swimming ever faster toward us. 99% of life died. 75% of species went extinct. Mammals, even plants, must have felt uneasy. If there is such a story, larger than our memories of Earth, there must be an equally large story of what is not life. If there is a process, or do all the processes stop? My heart breaks at seeing us in the past. Maybe why my grandmother's eyes were always watering. A friend said she gets more beautiful all the time of his friend who is dead. As she passes, she sheds her deterioration. Just as I wanted to bring the tree into the room, to duplicate it in paint, to leave nothing common for long. And I chose this poem to read. This is by Jane Hirschfield, another poem that's in the book. And um, because it has a correspondence to an image um, in, in my poem. Day beginning with seeing the International Space Station and a full moon over the Gulf of Mexico and all its invisible fishes. None of this had to happen, not Florida, not the ibis's beak, not water, not the horseshoe crab's empty body and not the living starfish. Evolution might have turned left at the corner and gone down another street entirely. The asteroid might have missed. The seams of limestone need not have been susceptible to sand and mangroves. The radio might have found a different music. The hips of one man and the hips of another might have stood beside each other on a bus in Aleppo and recognized themselves as long lost brothers. The key could have broken off in the lock and the nail can refused its lid. I might have been the fish the brown pelican swallowed. You might have been the way the moon kept not setting long after we thought it would, long after the sun was catching inside the low wave curls coming in at a certain angle. The light might not have been eaten again by its moving. If the unbearable were not weightless, we might yet buckle under the grief of what hasn't changed yet. Across the world, a man pulls a woman from the water from which the leapt from overfilled boat has entirely vanished. 
From the water pulls one child, another. Both are living and both will continue to live. This did not have to happen. No part of this had to happen. Uh, uh.